Okay. Hello, um, hello, friends and family. Hello, everyone. How you all doing? Hope you guys are doing well. So, um, I want to talk to us on a, a topic that um, God has placed. I believe the Holy Spirit has placed in my heart to discuss with you guys. So, um, we're going to be discussing today on the topic. I had to put some things down so I won't forget some of the things I would like to like touch how to pray for your enemy how to pray for your enemy so before we dive in before we um begin our scriptural backup we have to like first of all identify who our enemies are and so many other things that has um and every other thing that that goes in line with what we think about enemy and what have you so um who are our enemies first of all we are not supposed to have enemies yes as children of god we are not supposed to like say this person is my enemy that person is my enemy today we are going to i'm going to be explaining to us who exactly our enemies are right so our enemies when it comes to being um calling somebody your enemy <laughs> we, we're not supposed to be saying that by the way all right so um like in our world today especially i'm going to be using nigeria our country for example because because we all know that you know many times when you preach or when you say things you have to use the common examples you can you can um you can assess around you so in this in our country nigeria like right now <laughs> i can just say for my for example myself right now i can i can just decide that my neighbor next door is my enemy right you can just decide that somebody in the next compound is my enemy it's so common in nigeria we do that every day however we should understand that those people like for example we we come to that conclusion many times when possibly we've tried you know like you, you say you're a child of god and this particular person keeps getting on your nerve to the extent that somebody just came out i've heard of a story that uh, there's a this woman that you know kind of had a, a problem with the neighbor and the the fights and uh, splash water on each other and do a lot of things you know and definitely you know the person concludes that this person is my enemy <laughs> right so it so happens that way and so we can begin to conclude that oh that person that fights with me is my enemy and that person that's uh, somebody okay nigeria randomly nigerian people randomly use this word and um, those people in the village your village um your village people right <laughs> yeah yeah okay i think that's the right word to use your village my village people is doing me things like that right and so Many times we say our village people is doing us right, and we can just conclude that one woman in our village, one woman in that particular place, you know, is doing one thing or the other. You know, she used to perform witchcraft, she used to call somebody's name in the mirror, and then begins to interrupt the person's destiny and future and all that. Okay, so now that we can understand what exactly where I'm coming from, like the kind of things we say, what we say about human beings that they are our enemy. We can now understand. I hope you just have a, like a little background on what we call enemy. <laughs> we call enemy, right? So I want I want to ship in a little thing before we go through um scriptural backup. Because before we go in, we, we, we get to before we go to the Bible to see what exactly God is saying to us, what Jesus has taught us about this kind of things, right? And so, first of all, I would like to tell us this. Like we all know, so um, I don't think everybody knows because most of our churches don't teach these things, right? And so many of us don't know that whatever we see in this physical realm, whatever whatever we are going through right now, has already been manufactured in the spiritual realm, right? the The spiritual realm is what gives birth to what's happening in our physical world. So we cannot conclude that everything it's everything everything around us is all spiritual, right? Even the life we live is all spiritual, right? And so coming to this conclusion, we can now say that that um, the the kind of things we, we call um, the kind of, the enemies that we feel that we have, right? 
<laughs> they've already been manufactured in the spiritual realm, right? And so, I want us to get something here. Very, very important. And that is, the person you call your enemy is not your enemy. The only enemy that we have, the only enemy that we have is, um, the only enemy that we have is, is, is Satan, is the devil, right? So, that your neighbor you see that you're always fighting with, that you're always quarreling with, that you're always having one issue or the other with, that person isn't your enemy? No, of course not. The person is not your enemy. Now, you're going to, you, we're going to go deeper into this. So, there's something I'm taking us to with this, right? So the person that you you feel is is always oh that woman is so envious she she just this she just that she has a spirit of jealousy she's so jealous of me you know when she sees me pass by she'd be like oh look at her you know things like that is that woman really your enemy of course not she isn't your enemy All right the enemy who is the devil just wants to get us to you know fight one another you know you know <laughs> begin to um quarrel with ourselves conclude that this person is my enemy that person is the one doing me everything that is happening in my life is from my village you know that's the seat it's it's a huge very huge deceit it's 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 a lie it's a big fat lie from the pit of hell okay so i want us to understand this the person you're fighting is not your enemy the person you're fighting is in fact your own brother and sister as long as you call yourself a child of god that that woman you're saying that she's the one doing you it's a big fat lie she isn't the one doing you now we're going to go into the scriptures right now and then we begin to trash out some certain things that um i would just you know when i read after we read then we just break it down, like kind of explain what God is saying in that particular part of the scripture. So we're going to go to the book of Ephesians chapter 10, um, chapter 6, verse 10 to 12. So let's go to the book of Ephesians. Here I'm using um, um KJV, King James Version of the Bible. So we're going to go to the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 12. Let's read. I'm going to read aloud, right? Yeah. As we have therefore, right? Okay, yeah, that's true. Ephesians. Oh, sorry. That's Galatians. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, verse, verse 10 to um, 12. Okay, I'll read out loud. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 12. KJV Bible here. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might be strong in the lord and in power of his might put on the whole armor of god put on the whole armor of god who will know what the whole armor is armor of salvation breastplate of righteousness belt of truth shield of peace shield of faith sword of the spirit which is the word of god right we should the sword is the word of god so we should get what the whole armor of god is okay put on the whole armor of god I may be able to stand against the wires of the devil. Now, look, just listen very attentively to what, um, to what is being revealed here. Let's go on. And so, Lord, we pray for the spirit of dissension and the spirit of revelation and knowledge. So, even as we study the scriptures right now, we can understand exactly what you're saying right here. Maybe this place is very dark, please. And um, okay, sorry. 12 um for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places what is flesh and blood okay for we to break this scripture down we have to understand first of all what flesh and blood is what is flesh and blood flesh and blood is what we see our physical self so when the bible is saying we do not wrestle against flesh and blood so why are you fighting with your neighbor why are you fighting with your friend why are you fighting with that woman in your village when the scripture says you do not wrestle against flesh and blood that you wrestle against what let's go again let's go again <laughs> what does it say what does the bible say that we should wrestle with it said we should wrestle against um 
um, principalities against powers just go to google google those things and then you can understand what exactly you should be fighting and not fighting your neighbor and your friend and your and that woman in your village but against principalities against powers against the rest of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places so what does this mean this means that that your neighbor that you see i'm not saying that oh your neighbor is not doing you one thing or the other i'm not saying that your neighbor does your neighbor does not go to um a, a Babalo place according to Nigerians they say that he goes to a native doctor to do something to me. Meanwhile, a cost cost list cannot come. Anyways, that's another topic for um another day. Sometime some will be doing that. So um from what the scripture is saying, it means that so now this tells me that oh this woman that I keep fighting with, I keep um you know, quarreling with the person is not really my enemy, right? So who is now my enemy? What's now behind the whole thing? Okay. From what we just studied in the scripture, we can now conclude that that woman or that man isn't really your enemy, but it is the spirit behind their actions that you should battle with. Right? Hope now you get it. Hope you're understanding what I mean. Yes, that is what the scripture says. The scripture says you shouldn't fight with your brothers and sisters because we are all one in Christ. We are all children of God. So you shouldn't be fighting flesh and blood. You should be fighting the spirit, the principalities that are behind the person's action. So what does this mean? This means that, oh, so that woman that's always saying, cut you, I'm going to deal with you. You will die. You will die. You will, this will happen to you. You will never progress in your life. You can't. You, mm -mm, the person is in your enemy. Meanwhile, when people use such kind of words on you, you should know that words are very powerful, right? So when somebody begins to say that kind of thing to you, you have to use one of the armors, the whole armor of God, right? And one of the greatest armor is the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. What do you do? How will not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord? Psalm 118, verse 17, 17 or 18, thereabout. So you, you, you don't, you, you, you're not going to keep quiet on that because you know that this word, the word that we live in right now is formed by the word of God, by his words. So our words are very powerful, right? Oh, ma'am, you, what did you, you don't even, oh Lord, every tongue I've risen against me in judgment, I condemn, right? Your words fall to the ground and it can't take no shape in my life. Yes, exactly. And the way I speak it is exactly the way it's going to come to pass. And so you don't need to begin to say, I, I return it back to send that to you. You, you it is you that will die. You will, it is you that will never see good thing. No, you don't need to begin to combat and compete with your, your opponents. Person you see physically is not whom is behind that particular thing that is coming out. So what do you do need to do? You need to go down on your knee. Now, meanwhile, you're going to condemn whatever she's saying. Your words fall to the ground and they can't take no shape in my life, right? You've used the word of God. You apply the word of God. No weapon from against me shall prosper. Every tongue that reason against me in judgment, I condemn. You know, you say, you pray the words, you pray the scriptures, pray the scriptures. You say things like that from the word of God. Use the sword of the spirit to attack that particular word. Not the person, but the word that the person spoke. And then... You're going to begin to attack. Now, okay, now you, you look at that person, you possibly can sense that, okay, maybe it's jealousy. Maybe the person is like, the person is jealous of you. So what are you going to do? What you're going to do is this. You're going to begin to attack the spirit of jealousy in that person's life. Oh, Lord, that the, every spirit of jealousy that, that is ex, that is exhibiting itself, trying to, that is attacking me through so, so, and so person, I come against you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Because do you listen very attentively, my brothers and sisters. See, every single thing that somebody does is being sponsored by a particular spirit. As we all exist here on earth, both yourself, your actions, everything you do, is, 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 there's a spirit behind it. So if you're not possessed by God, you're possessed by evil spirits. Yes. So if you're the kind of person that is always cursing, 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 you're always using foul words. You're always saying things that you know you ought not to say as a child of God. It means that you're, you're, something is wrong with you. You're not the one that is, in fact, something is operating, something is living in you that is making you say those things right if you leave yourself for the enemy if you leave yourself for the devil if you leave your body for him to possess they are always the bible made us to understand that look that the devil is like a rolling lion seeking for whom to devour 
so when you leave your body empty you don't pray you just you know you're just there you just leave yourself for the devil he will go in he'll walk in and what and take possession of that body and begin to operate begin to do signs and wonders <laughs> begin to do a lot of things with your body so you don't allow the devil to take over your body so if you find yourself acting funny you know you're jealous of somebody you have hatred in your heart for somebody man you need to bind that spirit you need to shame and shackle it you know mm -mm -mm. i shame i shackle you i come against you i reject you i rebook i denounce i come in disagreement with you devil you can't use my body for that no 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 and so we see a lot of things in our world right now. We see a lot of things. A lot of things are ongoing. Man, it's crazy. So are you going to conclude that it's really that person that is doing that? No. No. There's always a spirit behind every action that we carry out. It is either you're being possessed by the spirit of God or you're being possessed by the spirit of the devil. So you take it or you leave it. It is either yes or yes. There's no argument about that. So when you find yourself acting funny, please ask yourself some questions. And it's time to begin to, um, you know, fast and pray and break that curse upon your life. And so let us also, um, I don't want it to be so long, okay? But let us also go through the, um, let's go to the book of Luke chapter 6, verse 27 to 28. Luke 6. The book of Luke, chapter 6, Matthew, Mark, Luke, okay? So, the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 27 and 28. Luke 6, 27 and 28. I want, us, I want us to see something so that we can understand that we have been doing a lot of things that we're not supposed to do, right? 27. But I say unto you, which here, love your enemies, do good to them, which hates you. <laughs> who is saying this this is jesus he said that we should do what we should but i say unto you who share love your enemies do good to them who hate you right and um bless them that curse you when somebody says you're stupid you're mad you see no good it, well, after rejecting that word you have to solve so the lord is saying to me right now if my enemy comes at me and say you are stupid you know see no good thing in your life that the only thing i need to do is oh wow i bless you god be with you according to the way the other kind of enemies that we say that we have right because that woman saying those things if you begin to say back to her it is you and your generation that will see no good your children will suffer you know, the kind of words that we use is so terrible. We begin to say a lot of bad things out of our mouth. And the same people that are saying these things are the same people that will say, I am a child of God. But Jesus said here, clearly said that we should bless them that cause us. Meaning that when somebody comes to you and say, oh, you're not, you're not go well, you're not go better for you. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, in your heart, you're already breaking those words. It can't work in your life, right? And you're like, I bless you. It is well with you. God bless you. See, some people think this is stupid, right? Yes, many of us think that this is stupid. But you know the reality? The truth is that it is not stupid. Why? Because, see, everything in this life is governed by a law. The scripture, the Bible, is, is, is the laws of God. Every single chapter in the Bible you study, you read, there's a particular thing God is ironing, is telling, is He's talking to you about that. But let me say this. Every, every scripture in the Bible, every verse, every chapter has its own message. And that particular message is like a law that you should obey. Right? And so when you when you, you study a particular scripture and it's telling you to do things like this and you're doing it the opposite way, it means you're breaking the laws of God. Just like, for example, in Nigeria, we have the laws that govern us in this country. And if somebody goes against it, you know what will happen to the person? Of course, you know what will happen, right? Exactly the same way it is in the Bible. When you go about this, obeying the laws of God, what happens? What happens is that you automatically... You're automatically um, 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 severing yourself away. As in, you're going against, it means that you're automatically going against the rules of God, right? And so when you go against the rules of God, you're going to face the consequence. Yes. You know, it's, it's kind of, um, it sounds odd. Many people will tell you, but David prayed, but David said this, but David said that. 
Yes, it's true that David did that. But do you know David operated in the Old Testament? Now, don't get me wrong. That does not mean that some of the Old Testament does not exist right now. Of course, God, when Jesus walked about the earth, he did some amendments. On the, he, he said to us that he's not coming to abolish the law. Rather, he's coming to, you know, touch it. Do some kind of, do some kind of polishing to it. So it's not all the rules in the Old Testament that was abolished. Some are still in existence to today. So you can't tell me, oh, because we're operating in the New Testament, I can get married to my sister. <laughs> That's not possible. Oh, because Jesus had died on the cross of Calvary, uh, because he died on the cross on the on the on the tree of Calvary right now. I can now I can I cannot do whatever I like, you know. I can I can just um I can convert somebody's wife, I can take over somebody's property. Of course, that was that particular law is in the Old Testament, and it's also in the New Testament. You can't do that. And so, all the ones that Jesus has touched, there's a place that Jesus said that it is said to you that it is an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, right? But I say to you that what when somebody slaps you on the cheek, turn the other one. What does it mean? It means that you shouldn't pay back evil with evil. You shouldn't pay back what somebody did to you. The the evil that somebody did to you, you shouldn't pay back with evil. And do you know the beautiful thing about this? Let me say something to us that so I can quickly round up this. We still have a lot of scriptures that uh, still backs this topic up. I don't think we're gonna be because I want us to finish as quickly as possible. This is taking a lot of time already. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, so we see from here that right now that um when you disobey the laws of God. We face the we face the consequences, and you can't tell me that the one who gave the law does not know what he's doing. We should be obedient. In fact, let me shock you. Do you know the reason why that you're unable? That person you, you've been praying evil prayer against. That person you've been you've been saying God make sure that they don't see food to eat in their house. You know? Do you know the reason why that person has been even driving? You don't even have a car. The person is the person has a car. Do you know why? Because you are disobeying the law of God. God has told you, Jesus has said to us that we should bless those that curse us. So what are you doing the opposite? Why are you using some? Give it some. Give it some. What kind of statement is that? I'm going to, if I go down on my knee for you, eh? Hey, by the time I pray some, by the time I give you some psalms, eh? Your life will never remain the same. Who's going to answer the prayer, by the way? That's your psalm you're praying. Who is, who, who is to answer? <laughs> Who is going to answer the prayers you're praying? All those your prayers are you? All those your psalm you're giving? Who is going to? Who is the person that is going to, you know, kind of answer that prayer? It's not God, but the same God is telling you, bless those that curse you. You see, are you trying to say that He doesn't know what He's doing? That <laughs> that He can say whatever He wants, but you're going to do what is what you like, what you prefer to do? Let me tell you, the reason why that your enemy has been winning. Even if the person is evil, let's say the person is the person has left his or her body for the devil to possess and begin to act funny. Even the person is doesn't have any reason to be successful in life. I mean, there's no reason why the person should be um above you because you call yourself a child of God. You're so called child of God, right? The reason why the person has been progressing ahead of you is because you've been disobeying the laws of God, you've been breaking his rules, you've not been obedient to his word. He said that the battle is his, it's not yours. So why not be? Very good. Be a good child. You know, obey him. Oh, he said, I should bless the cosmic. Me. Okay, I bless you. God bless you. He said, I'm not gonna prosper, right? Mm, I bless you. Even if, if you even if you say that, even if <clears throat> I feel like telling you the same thing right now, but I wouldn't say that because the 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 law that governs my life says that I shouldn't do that. And then when God says, Hmm, she's really been obedient to me, you know. Hmm. She's, she has not broken this law, this law in the scripture that I said that you should bless those that, because she just, she just, the angels are you taking out of this? And that just obeyed the law, you know? She just, she just said, she just blessed, she just blessed somebody who just cursed her. Therefore, we're going to arise and go and fight this battle now, you know? It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. You don't need to go and begin to fight the battle that don't belong to you. You don't need to begin to fight what you're not supposed to fight. There's somebody, there's a God up there who we call, who is professed that we serve and we love. We should leave him to fight our battles. So all those people praying, I send it back to send the Holy Ghost fire. I send it to the root of their house. Let it uproot it from its beginning to its end. Let it pull down their house. You are, in fact, you have no good. I don't want to use a bad word. You, you're not doing it. You know, you know the pain. You're breaking the laws of God. You're not supposed to do that. 
And that is why your enemy has been winning you. The, so your so-called enemy has been winning you. Because you are breaking the law. You know, when you break the law, you face the consequence. <laughs> when you break the laws of God, you face the consequence. Let's conclude this. Bless them that um, cause you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Pray for them. The Bible does not say you should cast them back. It says you should pray for them. Because you know, you know why you know why the Bible says, I'm getting a revelation here. Do you know why the Bible says that we should pray for them? Right? Why? Because they've been taken over by the enemy. Who is the enemy? Devil. Right now, they're not up, they're no longer operating. They're no longer operating the way God have designed them to operate. Now the enemy have taken over that body and he's using it. So now you begin to you, you're supposed to draw out your brother and your sister out of that the captivity of the enemy. Oh, I identify the spirit of jealousy in this woman. Wow. Father, I come against the spirit of jealousy in the life of this person. Heavenly Father, that the air in any way that the spirit of jealousy has crawled into the life of this man, this my brother, this my sister. Heavenly Father, this hour I is I ask that you break that shit off his heart life that is what you should be doing yes that is what you should be doing not the other way around because there's somebody who answers this prayer and his name is his god is jesus and then the moment you begin to pray your own because when i i call it pray your own you're doing your own thing you want to fight your own battle by yourself go ahead and they keep winning you five years will go by your enemy you're still walking on foot and your enemy is driving is cruising around them What's the latest car? Um, <laughs> it's Lamborghini. I will have you. He's, he's driving his BMW and the rest of them. I don't know. They, those, you know, all those cars, you know, the person is just enjoying himself. And you, you're busy killing yourself. A battle that you have allowed God to fight and give you victory as quickly as possible. And so I have some other, I have some other um, scriptures here. I have, um, you can just go read for yourself. Okay. I'll have First Peter 3 verse 8 to 13. That uh, as in as in this is this is um do not it's talked about don't pay evil for evil. So when you go through that scripture, you cannot see exactly what God is saying about this particular topic. First Peter three verse eight to thirteen. Please go and study it. We have Romans chapter twelve verse um seventeen to twenty one. Where God is saying that we should live in peace with one another, we should not quarrel without. We shouldn't. If it's possible for you to live in peace with all men, please live in peace with all men. Don't disturb yourself. See, God has played. And you go to the Book of Proverbs, chapter twenty-five, verse twenty-one to twenty-two. Study, study it. In fact, let's just go through that. That once we, we we're going to conclude with that scripture. Proverbs um, twenty-five. Proverbs twenty-five, verse twenty-one to twenty-two. Okay. If an enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shall heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. Now, did he say you should fight your enemy? He did not say that. If you go through the book of First Peter chapter 3, verse 8 to 13, you're going to see what God is saying. Come on, you don't need to do that. Just obey me. Obey the law. Stop breaking my laws. The moment you're breaking my laws, you're making me a fool. And when you feel like you're making me a fool, when you feel like you can do, I will leave you to fight your battle yourself. Who wants God to fight? If you want God to fight your battle, if you want him to be the one, if you want him to be the one to fight for you, to begin to fight for you from today, all the words you've used, all those bad prayers you pray, begin to repent from them right now. Go down your knee and say, Father, in all the ways I've prayed against my village members, <laughs> in all the ways I have gone contrary, in all the ways I've broken your laws, the laws that you gave to us in order for we to... Listen, don't say that David prayed. David operated in the Old Testament law. He's, when he did that, he's justified in doing those prayers. And God came through for him. If he watched after the prayer, you see where God fought the battle and won it for him. And so you don't need to begin to operate in that law. He has given us a new law that we should operate on. And when you operate in the new law, the law will work for you, right? It will work for you. Obey the laws of God. When you obey the laws, the laws will obey, will work, will definitely work for you. And all things are working together for the good of those who love him, who obey him, who hearken unto his voice. And of course, carry out the works that he asks us to do. And so, everyone, I mean, I would like to extend this, this topic, but let's just finish it here. So, 
so um i hope this has helped you i hope this has blessed you i pray that you hearken to the voice of the lord who is telling you it's not i who is speaking but you know it's the word of god you know being conveyed to you right now and so in any way you've broken this very law it's a good on your knee repent of that very sin ask god for forgiveness begin to pray for your enemies begin to pray for them begin to come against those words those spirits that behind your their actions and all that and you will see the lord coming through for you in every of your endeavor yes that's true we should understand that these are laws these are laws of god and a law is a law you must abide by the law don't make up your own laws don't make your up, up your own rules that's why many times that's why in fact i don't understand what's going on in the churches this day they don't teach these things as in, they don't, so many ch many churches don't break these things down in this they, they don't tell you that look even you find them doing it in the church Holy Ghost fire upon the root of that woman's house. But if you're firing the, the kingdoms of darkness, they say there's an altar that you're sending that fire to. When you when you send the fire to the altar, it's okay, you're you're justified. Let's say there's an, a particular um, person who performs witchcraft, you know, and then you can send fire to their coven, to their altars where they do those things. Send the fire of God to go and consume those authors. But when you see your physical man and your, your, I want you to understand what I'm saying. I'm not, don't go and start thinking the other way around that I said you should not pray, you should bless, you should. No, no, no. Listen to what the Bible is saying. The Bible says that you should bless. When it comes, it says, don't, the, in fact, this, this is the rule that is governing this, this thing. Do not fight against this thing. Don't fight against human being. The person you see face to face, that woman in your village, don't see her doing this one witchcraft don't finish up actually they kill everybody for, for, for house if you're doing that eh listen attentively if you're doing that she definitely maybe she has even tied you down because the the power that is operating that is living in her if you don't you're not a child of god you can't stand it this that she's operating in another realm that's why these people these people that do these things eh when, when, when they, when they are performing these things and they see that you're ignorant, you're busy, you call, you, they even tell so, so something to you. Look at you, this stupid fool. They begin to use those words and you begin to react. How dare you? How we show you? Look, my time I use some this and some that on you, eh? You was here, you would do it. They'll be, okay, they're happy. Let me tell you something. You know why they're happy? Because they know more than you. They know that you are breaking the law of your father. And when you're breaking that law, hmm. They continue doing what they're doing. So the moment you just pass by that particular word, what will you do next? Attack the spirit behind it. Go to their altars. Attack the altars behind her actions. Wherever she's doing her witchcraft from everything, send your fire of the living God to go and consume those altars where she's performing those things from. And not when you see her face to face, begin to fight, begin to curse, begin to use foul words. Even when you're praying, make sure your heart is clean. Don't begin to say, Father, go to their house and begin to kill the children one by one. Let the children die. Let them turn upside down. Let them die. Let them this. No, 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 no. You don't do that. Attack the spirit behind her actions. <laughs> Attack the spirit behind her actions. And once you, once that spirit loses hold over that person, over that woman, over that man, it's over. You see yourself winning. So I hope this word has blessed you. I hope you found. Um, I hope you go and study on your own, you know, study a lot. Um, maybe there are a lot more, many scriptures are really backing this topic up. And if you go do your own research, you're going to discover. See, I really encourage us all to please go and study the Bible for yourself. Pray for the spirit of knowledge. Pray for the spirit of understanding. Pray for the spirit of discernment and for the spirit of revelation, especially. So that when you study, you're understanding what, because every single chapter, every single word of God is God, is God's, I say every single word you study in the Bible is the word of God. It is, it is him speaking. And so there will always be personalize it. There's always something that he's saying to you at that particular point in time. There's always something that he's trying to convey to you. So when you study the word of God, study with the spirit of knowledge and revelation so that as you study, you can be able to understand exactly what he's trying to convey to you. I hope this word bless you, bless your family, bless your children, your home, your marriage, yourself, your business, everything. You want to take over, you want to begin to rule, you want to begin to, you know, be that person that God says you are in the Bible, in his word. Begin to pray for your enemies. Begin to attack the spirit behind their actions and don't pray against them. I love you all. See ya next time. I'm going to bring, bring in a lot. Of, you know, we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, as in we're going to have some other topics we're going to discuss. So once in a while. I'll bring you 
the word of the living God. As it conveys it in my heart, as the Holy Spirit leads, okay? Ha! Bye-bye! See you next time! <laughs>